Question 1. What is the concept of aspect-oriented programming? Which problem does it solve? What is a cross-cutting concern? Name three typical cross-cutting concerns. What two problems arise if you don't solve a cross-cutting concern via aspect-oriented programming? Let's start with the first part of the question. What is the concept of aspect-oriented programming? So aspect-oriented programming is a paradigm that complements object-oriented programming, and it provides a way to implement cross-cutting concerns in a way for those cross-cutting concerns to be separated from the business logic. Now, it is important to remember that aspect-oriented programming is not something that, you sh that should be used instead of object-oriented programming. Instead, we should use aspect-oriented programming together with object-oriented programming. And whenever we are facing a challenge where aspect-oriented programming, sorry, when object-oriented programming with design patterns, solid concepts, etc. cannot give us a proper solution to the problem, then we should use, then we should look at aspect-oriented programming. It is very important not to overuse aspect-oriented programming, because if you will overuse aspect-oriented programming, you will actually end up with the code that is much harder to read, harder to debug, harder to maintain, than if you would only write pure object-oriented programming code. Now, the, the aspect-oriented programming uh, allows us to implement the cross-cutting concerns, and we are achieving this by having ability to modify the code, by having the ability to alter behavior, uh, uh, behavior of the code without having to modify the code itself. And this is achieved by specifying the location where code should be altered, and this is uh, usually a point cut expression that is managed against a joint point, and also specifying the advice. In other words, this is the code which should be implemented uh, in a, a point where point cut expression is matched against the joint point. Now, this might sound a bit cryptic, but after going into the code, it should be much easier to get the concept of it. So now let's go into the IntelliJ. Please open the module to question one. And over here, you have an example of the project that uses aspect-oriented programming and also that is implementing the same thing without usage of aspect-oriented programming. Please go and open first the no AOP package, and over here, let's go to the runner class. We have a simple application over here that is invoking the complex report action, and this complex report action under the hood has few main interact few, few interactions. The first one, it fetches the report. The second one, it formats the report. Then it saves the report, and it gets the report again. Now, after I will execute this class, you will see that all of the actions are being executed, but also the performance or the uh, execution time of each of the method is being locked. So over here, we can see that get report took three seconds, the format report took one second, the save report took seconds, and get report again took three seconds. Now, if you will go into this code, you can see that over here I, I have achieved what I wanted to achieve, but this code is not that readable as I would like it to be. And this is because this performance logger is executed in each of those places, and in each of the places, the code is being duplicated. So every time I need to call the star method, and every time I need to call the stop method. Now, this is the issue that you will have if you are implementing something that is called a cross-cutting concern, but you are not using aspect-oriented programming. And performance logging is one of the examples where aspect-oriented programming is very good use case for it. 
So now instead of actually executing this uh, performance logger in every place, let's have a look how we can do this better with usage of aspect-oriented programming. So if you will go into the with AOP example now, and you will go into the action, we have the same complex report action, but after opening this, you can see that this code is now much easier to read. It is because all of the cross-cutting concerns are actually implemented via the aspects, and now I am able to focus only on the business logic. So I see that report is being fetched, then it's being formatted, and then it's being saved, and then it's being fetched again. Now let's execute the second example, and let's see if it will also report all of the execution times. So as you can see, it did execute, and now I can see that get report took three seconds, format report took one second, and save report took two seconds. Now also you can see that the uh, get report uh, the second time was actually not executed, and there is also this cacheable aspect. I will explain this one in a moment. For now, let's focus uh, on those execution times. So as you can see, we have achieved exactly the same. I have executed all of those actions and also all of those times are being locked. However, my code is much easier to read, much easier to maintain and easier to understand because I am able to focus on the business logic over here. Now the question is how it works. So all of the code related to the performance execution is stored over here in performance logger aspect. We will have discussion about aspect advices and point cut expressions in upcoming questions. Now let me give you an intro to what we will have in upcoming questions. So this whole class is called the aspect and aspect contains the advice, which is which is code that is being injected. Also, it contains a point cut expression, which is managed against a joint point, and joint point is a method execution. So what does it mean? We have a complex report action. This complex report action executes the get report method, format report, and save report. Each of the method execution over here, so whenever the complex report action is interacting with the get report, and each time when complex report action is interacting with the format report, and it is interacting with the save report, this is called a join point. So the join point in this case is a method execution. We will have more information about the joint points in upcoming questions. For now, let's remember for the simplicity that the joint point is a method execution. Now the point cut expression is what is written over here. So this is the way for the aspect-oriented programming to know when to inject this code. And this point cut expression means that we want to inject this code whenever we have the method execution that is annotated with the annotation performance logger. So whenever we are using the performance logger annotation, which is defined over here, at the join point, which is the method execution, so we have a get report method, which is annotated with the performance logger, we have a format report method, which is annotated with the performance logger, and also we have a save method, which is annotated with the performance logger. For each of those places, this point cut expression will be matched and it will execute following advice, which is around advice. This advice saves the start time of the method execution. Then it calculates the duration of the execution and then it logs the execution of the screen. So now if we will compare it to the no aspect oriented programming example, instead of having to execute performance logger in each of the places, and in this example, the performance logger saves the execution information and prints it over here. So instead of having to execute this in each of the places, I have implemented the aspect that contains the point cut expression 
that is matching the join point that has the advice which contains the code that should be injected. And in this code, I'm doing the, uh, I'm logging the execution time. Now, uh, the result is a clean and easy to read code. So as, as we can uh, see, uh, the aspect oriented programming allows us to implement the cross cutting concerns. And this way, aspect oriented programming solves the following challenges. First, it allows us to properly implement cross-cutting concerns without using of the code duplications. And also with the usage of it, we can avoid mixing unrelated code. So usually when we want to implement something like logging, performance logging, monitoring transactions or caching, we can uh, use the aspect-oriented programming, and with this, we will be able to avoid all of the code duplications. Now, as you can see, we have the examples of the caching over here. And also in the second example, uh, you can see that I have created a cacheable uh, annotation. This cacheable annotation is used by the cacheable aspect and this cacheable aspect is another example of how we can use aspect-oriented aspect programming to implement a cross-cutting concern. So the goal of this aspect is to execute whenever we have a, a join point matched by this point cut expression. And this point cut expression says that match all of the method execution that is annotated by the cacheable annotation. So currently, uh, we have only one method that is matched by this, and this is get report. This get report is annotated with the performance logger for the performance logging, but also it's annotated with the cacheable annotation. Now this cacheable annotation is used in the cacheable aspect, and whenever we have a method that is being executed, then it will first check if the result of this method is already in the cache. If this is already in the cache, then it will fetch the value from the cache. If this is not in the cache, first it will execute the method and it will remember the result of the method in the cache. So next time when it will be executed, it will not execute the real method uh, again. Now, if we will re-execute this example, you will see that the get report took three seconds only first time when it was executed. And also, as you can see, the fetching the report over here was uh, presented only once. On the second execution, uh, it said that the value is fetching from the cache. So the uh, method was not uh, executed instead, and it, it did not took three seconds. It returned immediately because uh, we were able to fetch value from the cache. So this is another example of how you can use aspect-oriented programming uh, to avoid code duplications and implement cross-cutting concerns for the caching. The next part of the question asks uh, us to name three typical cross-cutting concerns. So over here, I have outlined actually more than three uh, usages. So usually I saw aspect-oriented programming used for logging, performance logging, caching, security, transactions, and monitoring. And in this code, you have the example of the performance logging, and also you have example of the caching. What two problem arise if you don't solve a cross-cutting concerns via aspect-oriented programming? So as you can see, if we will not use aspect-oriented programming, the first thing that we will have is the code duplications. So all of the before and after sections will be duplicated. The best we can do is to do the refactors and extractions into helper method, but still it will not solve fully the problem. This is what we saw in this complex report action. Over here, uh, we have already performed the extractions into the performance logger. However, still the start and stop method is being duplicated. And also we are mixing a concern. So the business logic code is mixed with the logic transaction code, and this makes code harder to read.
If you enjoyed this video and would like to retrieve explanation to other Spring exam topics, you can get a full Spring Professional Certification exam tutorial course by following the link in the description.